Welcome once again to EC Philip blog. In this particular video, we'll be treating hydraulic press, or you can call it hydraulic lift or brakes. Before we go into that, always learn to subscribe, share. Now, please, this hydraulic press is not actually something that is common. First of all, we need to know how it works. And we have on the board how this thing works. It is a machine that uses the fluid pressure, fluid pressure, to lift heavy load. First of all, this particular machine makes use of pressure, fluid pressure, to lift the heavy load. It works with the Pascal's principle. Pascal's principle is also called the principle of a transmissibility of pressure. Now, the question is, what is Pascal's principle? So we are going to put that down. Okay, on the board we have the principle of Pascal's, or you can call it Pascal's principle. It's a very simple law here. What does this law state? It states that when an external pressure is applied in a fluid, no matter what the fluid is, it can be a gas. A gas is a fluid. A liquid is a fluid. In a fluid. The pressure in the fluid at any point, at any point, increases at the same amount. Be very, very careful. If you want to state Pascal's principle, this is very important. This, and it only works in fluid. At any point. The pressure at any point. What this law is trying to tell us is that we have a fluid. This is a hydraulic press. This is just a simple diagram of a hydraulic press. That any pressure you apply here will affect the pressure in the liquid. And any pressure occurring here will be the same. With No matter the point in this particular fluid, the pressure must be equal. So if I apply a pressure of 20 newton per meter square here, that same 20 newton per meter square is working here. That same 20 newton per meter square is working here. It is working all over the same. It doesn't change. That is what Pascal principle is trying to tell us. Which means that, if it is true, the mechanical advantage of a hydraulic press and the velocity ratio is the same. Just know that the mechanical advantage of a hydraulic press and the velocity ratio are always equal. Because the same amount of pressure is going through them. Know that, because sometimes they ask you which of these following machines has the same equal mechanical advantage and velocity ratio. That machine is hydraulic press, or they can call it hydraulic, uh, some call it hydraulic piston, or lift, or brakes. So, in the actual sense now, the pressure here will be equal to the, the pressure on the smaller piston will be equal to the pressure on the larger piston. So from here now, let's go further to derive the mechanical advantage and the velocity ratio of a hydraulic press, just like we did in our previous video in other machines. Okay, now let's see how this thing works. Remember, we said that the pressure, the pressure at the larger, large piston, remember from the diagram, the large piston is where the load is is equal to the pressure small piston and at the small piston is where the effort is being applied now let's make this a little bit smaller so the pressure at this larger piston we can call it p l and we are told that it is equal to the pressure at the smaller piston that is where the effort is working okay now if from our diagram, you can see that the radius of the larger piston is bigger than that of the small piston. So, pressure is actually force. Pressure is force over area. I don't want you to cram, just watch carefully. Pressure is equal to force over area. Now, the pressure at the larger piston, if we bring it out, we give us the force on the larger piston is load. Remember, load is a type of force. So we have load 
over area. While the pressure at the smaller piston, the force is effort. So we have effort over area of the smaller piston, while this is the larger piston. We also know that area is equal to pi r square. Area of a piston is pi r square. So if we input this here, what we have now is, instead of writing this, we have load over area of the larger piston is pi capital R square because this is the radius according to our diagram of the larger piston is equal to this now will be replaced with this so we have effort over pi r small r which according to our diagram is the area of the small piston now if we make load over effort the subject of the formula we have that load over effort that means we are cross multiplying so this is coming down here why this goes up so we have pi r square bigger r divided by pi small r square now pi can cancel pi pi can cancel pi so as you can see we have load over effort is equal to r square over r square now load over effort we know is a fixed formula in machine load over effort is mechanical advantage mechanical advantage and from the concept of this i told you that mechanical advantage which is force in the larger piston which is the load over the force in the smaller piston which is the effort is equal to the velocity ratio therefore the velocity ratio of a hydraulic press lift or brake v dot r is equal to r square over r square the mechanical advantage is equal to the mechan um, the velocity ratio take note of that this is the only machine where the mechanical advantage is equal to the velocity ratio so this is all you need to know for now about hydraulic press under machine so we are going to make use of sometimes sometimes we can tell you that velocity ratio is equal to force in the larger piston over force in the smaller piston they are still the same with this because force on the larger piston or the larger force is the load why the force in the smaller piston is what the effort so velocity ratio is also equal to mechanical advantage so we are going to use a question now to see how to apply these particular formulas okay we have an example here on the board so we are going to use this particular example to explain how to apply the formulas concerning a hydraulic press or pump or anything you call it so we have this example here the question says in a hydraulic press a force of 40 newton is applied to the smaller piston a force of 40 newton is applied to the smaller piston of area 10 cm square if the area of the larger piston is 200 cm squared calculate the force obtained so they are asking us to calculate the force obtained here so that force obtained here is actually the load why this force any force applied to a machine is the effort which is the force at the smaller piston so what do we say we say that the force at the larger piston over the force at the smaller piston is equal to the radius first of all this over this but we know that r square the capital r square over this square from if you missed our previous video please go and uh, check what we did there this is actually coming from the area so here can be replaced instead of writing this this is what we have area of the larger piston divided by area of the smaller piston so but had even they gave us radius we make use of the radius straight but in this particular question we are given the area so area of the larger piston over area of this now what are we looking for force applied on the larger piston so if we make this the subject of the formula this becomes fl 
will be equal to this we multiply this. So we have Fs times Al divided by As. So the force on the smaller piston is 40 times area of the larger piston is 200 divided by area on the smaller piston is 10. Now, watch the unit. This is cm square. This is cm square. It does not matter. The unit does not matter because we know that mechanical advantage of velocity ratio, they have no unit. So cm, we cancel cm. The unit does not matter. You don't convert. Even if you convert, you still end up getting the same answer, but you are wasting your time in the hall. Remember, everything about this is exam focused. So this cancel will give us one into this is one. So four times 200 gives us 800 Newton. So the force that we obtained on the larger piston is 800 Newton. So if you have any question concerning this, drop it in the comment section. For more questions, go to exercise and the past question section. You see numerous questions solved on this.